um, okay. First of all, thank you all for joining a new live webinar hosted by the Huawei Enterprise Support Community. Uh, thank you for being uh, on time. Thank you for your interest in our uh, webinars. Uh, as some of you may already know, we have monthly webinars. Um, so um, if you're interested in learning from uh, this type of uh, live sessions, you can uh, subscribe to to receiving email notifications on the Huawei Enterprise Support Community. Um, this, uh, today we will have a, a webinar on uh, network manage management and monitoring. Our host for today is Mohammad Firdaus bin Hassan. He works as, a, as an engineer in Huawei. He is also certified. He owns the HCIE uh, routing and switching, which, um, again some of you may know some of you may not know is the highest level of certification that uh, huawei has it's uh, very difficult to achieve so this is a great achievement and uh, before we start the, the the actual presentation i would just like to thank you for uh, joining this live webinar uh, this is uh, his second webinar his second time hosting for uh, for the enterprise support community, so thank you for uh, thank you for this. And um, now I will uh, I will let you start your presentation. You can uh, share your screen, and uh, I will uh, I will let you take over. <laughs> okay, sure. All right. Thank you, Alina. Thank you. All right. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good day. So today. Um, I will be continuing with the um, forum community for our webinar. And the topic for today is uh, network management and monitoring. A little bit of uh, background uh, for myself. My name is Muhammad Firdaus bin Hassan. I'm from Malaysia and currently uh, working as a tech support engineer in Huawei Enterprise Tech. So what will be uh, included in our webinar today? Uh, the first part, we will um, understand the network monitoring and management uh, introduction, which includes uh, the common protocols being used, uh, some configuration, and also some troubleshooting cases um, that I will be sharing uh, later. And for the lab part, there will be two parts. Uh, the first part, I will show how uh, Huawei devices um, interconnect with a third-party NMS and also um, some introduction on eSight. So I will show how does uh, eSight interface looks like, and I will introduce some uh, features and also functions uh, from our eSight. And after that, we have the Q&A session uh, at the end of this webinar. So as uh, to start our session today, some introduction regarding network monitoring. So basically, network monitoring is a process where all networking components, uh, for example, like routers, switches, uh, firewall servers, which are being monitored for fault and their performance. So it is evaluated uh, continuously to maintain and also to optimize their availability in the network. While for network management, it's a process of managing a network for fault and performance using various kind of tools and also technologies to meet up with the network requirement. So here are some of the uh, protocols used in network monitoring and management. So basically we have a lot of um, protocols, but I just listed a few of it. Uh, the first one is SNMP, a simple network management protocol, which is widely being used uh, to monitor network devices. And um, the next one is LLDP, which, which is a link layer uh, discovery protocol. So this protocol we use to discover the neighbor uh, connected uh, to our device. We also have NQA, network quality analysis. So NQA is a mechanism we use to detect, uh, for example, if we have any delay, jitter or packet loss in our network. Uh, the fourth one is NetStream. So basically, uh, NetStream is a Huawei uh, application which we use to uh, analyze the traffic uh, based on the statistic collected. So basically, NetStream is based on the uh, packet flow in the network. Also, we have S-Flow, which is also similarly with NetStream, which is a, 
um, technology that used to collect uh, the traffic information. However, S flow is based on per packet compared to NetStream, which is on a flow packet base. The last one is NetConf. Uh, NetConf also is one of the communication mechanism used uh, protocol in the network um, monitoring and also management. So basically, NetConf we used uh, to monitor the device to add the configuration uh, from the NMS to back up the configuration to edit the configuration. Also, we can use NetConf. So today we will focus more on SNMP and a bit of um, on NetStream and also NetConf. So the first part is for SNMP, uh, which is a standard network management protocol uh, widely being used in our network today. So the SNMP manages the network elements using a central computer, which is known as the station, on which we install the uh, software for the network monitoring. So based on this uh, simple network topology, we have the station here based on this uh, NMS site where we install the network monitoring software. And after that, we have the uh, NMS agent, the one that we are uh, want to monitor. For example, if we have any routers, switches uh, in the network, then we can uh, monitor those devices. And at the end of the network, we have the end user, which connected to our um, network, which we can also monitor from our network monitoring software. So the purpose on why we use SNMP is because uh, the rapid growth in the number of network devices increases the workload for the network administrator. So for example, if you have a lot of network devices that needs to be managed, so SNMP will help to reduce and also reduce the workload um, and also help to improve the efficiency. And in addition to that, for example, if you have um, the network coverage areas that are being constant, constantly being expanded, so making the real-time monitoring and fault location of the network devices difficulty. So this is where SNMP helped to reduce uh, the problem. And apart from that, uh, network have many types of devices and the management of interfaces of devices of different vendors conform to the different standards. So when we use the SNMP protocol, which is a standard protocol, this will help uh, to manage other vendors' devices easily as well. And while for the benefit, as I mentioned just now, it helps to improve uh, the work efficiency. It helps to reduce the management costs and also it helps to reduce the impact of the feature configuration on the device operation. So for SNMP, we have uh, SNMP version 1, version 2 and also version 3. So for SNMP v1 and v2c, basically the packet contains the version which is uh, V1 or V2, and also the community, uh, which we have the read and also write community, and as well the SNMP PDU, a protocol data unit, which um, consists of get request, get next request, set request, response, and also trap. So below here is the working uh, mechanism of uh, SNMP V1 and V2C. So the first part is when uh, the NMS sends the get request packet to the SNMP agent. And basically in the packet, the fields contain uh, the version, community name, PDU type, and also the MIP object. And also the NMS will send a set packet uh, to the agent, which contains um, more or less the same with the get packet, but the only difference is that it has the expected MIP object value. So when the um, NMS uh, sends the get request and also the set request, uh, the agent will reply with the response packet. And at the last part here, the uh, agent will also respond to the thread packet as well. So for SNMP version 3, the packet contains the version, the header, and also the security parameters, context, Agent uh, engine ID, context name, and also SNMP v, uh, version 3 PDU. So basically, the differences between um, SNMP v3 and uh, v1 and v2c is that v3 is much more secure because it has the security parameters which support the uh, authentication and also encryption. 
So the NMS will send a get packet to the agent, which contains version, header, security parameters, and also PDU. So based on this uh, figure below here, uh, the agent authenticates the get request packet from the NMS. So if the authentication is successful, the agent will decrypt the PDU, which is the get next, um, get request, and also so on. If the decryption is successful, the agent obtains the value of the sys contact and encapsulate it in the PDU of the response packet. So the main differences is, um, is that uh, SNMP v3 have these uh, security parameters. So in this table uh, here, I have uh, summarized um, what are the feature that uh, supported in SNMP v1, v2c, and also v3. So the first one is the access control. So for SNMP v1 and v2c, we use uh, the access control based on the community name, which is the read and also write. And also we use the MIP view management information base, which um, have the information of the database uh, of the device, which uh, covers the entities of the device. While for SNMP v3, it uses the access control based on user, user group, and also meet view. So first of all, when you configure the SNMP v3, you need to configure the user, the user group, and you need to specify the meet view. Moving on to the next one is the um, authentication and privacy. So for SNMP v1 and v2c, it uses the authentication based on the community name, which is the read and write. While for SNMP v3, it supports the authentication mode and also the encryption mode. So for the authentication mode, we have the MD5 and also we have the SHA. And the encryption mode, we have DES and also we have AES. So it has uh, quite a number of encryption modes supported for the, uh, for the SNMP v3. For the error code, uh, SNMP v1 supports six error codes, while uh, V2C and V3 support 16 error codes. So for threat feature, all of the SNMP versions support threat, while for inform, it only support for uh, SNMP version 2 and also SNMP version 3. So basically, inform uh, feature is when the, uh, the device send the um, for example, if there is alarm on the device, it will send to the NMS, and the NMS will reply with the inform response packet. While for trap, it will just send the, the it will just send the trap uh, from the device to the uh, NMS, but the NMS will not reply any packet. So we won't know whether uh, the NMS received that packet or not. But compared to inform, the NMS will reply with an inform response packet. And the last one is get bulk. Uh, for SNMP v1, it does not support, while for SNMP v2c and v3, it does support. So get bulk means that we want to get a large uh, number of uh, data from the devices. So we can use uh, v2c and also v3 support this get bulk feature. Moving on to the next part is uh, the netconf. So netconf basically is a communication mechanism also used between a network management system and also the managed devices. So we can use netconf to add, modify, and also delete configuration of network devices, and also obtain the configuration, and also we can use to monitor the status of the network devices. And the network device uh, provide a standard application programming interface, API, through which the NMS can manage these devices using netconf. So each of uh, the network devices have its own API, and this can be used to monitor uh, from our NMS. So here is the interconnection between uh, one um, netconf server and also client. So in the first part is when the switch uh, set up an SSH connection with the NMS, as you can see here on the first part. And the second part is when they exchange um, they are supported capabilities by sending a hello packet. The third one is when it sends the RPC request from the NMS. So after setting up the netconf session with the switch, the NMS will send the RPC request, which is a remote procedure call to the switch for configuration management. This is where we can 
uh, use the uh, adding configuration, deleting configuration, or maybe backing up the configuration as well. And then after that, the switch passes and handles the receive RPC request and send a RPC reply to the NMS back. And after preceding operation are completed, the NMS sends an RPC request to close the NetCom session. So this will reduce the resource consumption on the switch and also the server itself. While the switch closes the NetCom session and sends an RPC reply to the NMS back. So basically here is the internet on how does the uh, switch, for example, and also the NMS initiate the NetCon uh, connection. So uh, in this table, here is the instance between the SNMP and also the NetCon. So the first one is for the configuration protection. For SNMP, it does not support, while for NetCon, it support because NetCon provides a lock mechanism to prevent multi-user configuration conflict. For configuration backup, SNMP does not support it, but NetConf support. So you can, whenever you configure NetConf to communicate with the NMS, you can use the feature to uh, backup the configuration. For the configuration query, SNMP support uh, configuration query. Uh, NetConf also support the uh, configuration query. In terms of scalability, SNMP is poor, but NetConf is good because it has a uh, multi-layer model and also it is in the XML encoding format. And the last part is in terms of security, where among the version of uh, SNMP, as I mentioned just now, only SNMP v3 provides a secure connection, which they have the authentication and also the encryption. Also, NetConf uh, using some security protocols such as SSH to initiate the uh, connection and also simple object access protocol to ensure the network security. So the next uh, protocol or the next um, application that we can use in our network monitoring and management is NetStream. So NetStream is a Huawei application that collects and analyzes services uh, traffic based on network flows. So NetStream is a statistic collection technology based on network traffic. So it collects and classify the statistic on the communication traffic and also resource usage over the network. So it will provide the service and resource specific for the monitoring and management functions. So the purpose of uh, using NetStream, NetStream will collect the statistic on network traffic and periodically sends the statistic to the collector, NetStream collector. And the statistic can be used for charging network management and also guiding the network planning. So in NetStream, it consists of three devices. We have the data exporter, we have the uh, collector, and also we have the data analyzer, NDE, NSC, and also NDA. So basically in this uh, figure below here, it shows um, uh, NDE, NSC, and also NDA. So the NDE will collect uh, the statistic over the passing traffic. So whatever uh, traffic that passes through this uh, firewall or any other devices, it will collect the statistic. And also it will send the detailed statistic to the NSC for filtering and also the merging. Then the collector, the NSC, will send the filtered and merge statistic to the NDA, to the uh, data analyzer for further merging and generation of intuitive uh, graph and also reports. So the generated graph and report will provide a reference basically for network planning or maybe network monitoring, uh, some application analysis, or maybe some fault location in the network. So the communication between the different types of services is implemented through a group of IP packets, which is sent from one terminal to another. So in this IP packet, it will form the data flow of a network services, which NetStream will use to provide the uh, analysis on also uh, based on the statistic collected. So most data flows are temporary, uh, intermittent, and also bidirectional. So NetStream mainly identify the different flows and collect flows specific statistic based on the IP address, the destination IP address, the source IP address, and also based on port destination and source port, the protocol, 
the task type of service and also the input and also the output interface. We have other methods also to monitor the network traffic. Uh, there are a few methods uh, in this table here, such as based on IP packet, where it saves uh, the counter indexes in the routing table to count the number of bytes and also the packet that passes through the device. However, this uh, method only will collect the basic statistical information. We can also use ACL uh, to monitor the net network traffic. Um, so we can match uh, the flow based on the ACL and then collect the statistic. However, we, if we have a very large network, then we will need to uh, configure a quite a large number of ACL. And also it's only able to collect flow statistic that match the ACL rules. The third one, we can also use SNMP. So we use SNMP to implement some simple statistic function such as interface statistic, IP packet statistic, and also ACL matching statistic. However, there are some limitation. Uh, for example, because we need to pull the information from the NMS uh, to the device. So this will consume some CPU uh, and also network resources. And also it is not robust enough because it will not include detailed explanation or detailed statistic regarding the traffic collected. We can also use um, port mirroring. So it will duplicate the traffic passing through a port and send the duplicated traffic to a dedicated server for the statistic and also analysis. However, this one uh, requires a dedicated server, a separate server, and also it occupies an interface which we need to configure on the device for the port mirroring. And also it requires the interface support port mirroring. And the last part is based on duplication, uh, traffic duplication at the physical layer. We can use an optical splitter or other device at the physical layer and then send the duplicated traffic to a dedicated server for the statistic uh, collection. However, the limitation is that we need a dedicated server and we need additional hardware. So these are some of other methods we use, but there are some uh, limitation uh, based on this method. So what is the benefits uh, of uh, NetStream? As I mentioned just now, we can use for accounting. So NetStream will provide a detailed data for accounting based on the resource usage, based on the link usage, bandwidth, and also time segment. So the data also include, uh, but it's not limited to the number of packet, number of bytes uh, of the IP addresses, time, and also types of service and also the application type. So enterprises can calculate the expenses of each department and distribute the operation costs accordingly to use the resource effectively. We can also use uh, NetStream for network monitoring. So it will monitor all the outgoing traffic in real time and also provide the analysis on the bandwidth usage of the services. And the last one is user monitoring and analysis. So when we use NetStream, it will obtain the network resource usage of the user. So we can know which user are using the most resource in our network. So our network administrator can efficiently plan and allocate the network resources and ensure the network security. So before uh, I move to the other part, um, for the next part, is there any question from the participants? I see there are some questions in the chat box, if you can take a look. There are not many and uh, okay. let's see. Uh, let me see. I think the first question was, um, NetStream, is it a Huawei pro, 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 I don't know, I'm not sure. What proprietary or proprietary. Yes, protocol. basically, uh, yes, NetStream is uh, supported on a Huawei uh, platform only. It is a Huawei application. What is the latest version of software that runs on the network uh, management? So for the network management station, we have uh, eSight, for example, and the latest version is uh, V3R10. And also we have other uh, network management uh, station as well, such as NCE, which is a new uh, NMS from Huawei. 
So we have a uh, quite number of uh, NMS uh, on Huawei. NMS Huawei will work as an MP from Cisco as stream switches. Yes. Uh, so there's one question asking whether NMS Huawei will work with uh, other vendors. The answer is yes. So um, basically, uh, we also support other vendors' uh, devices such as Cisco, uh, H3C, and so on. So for example, um, I will show you how you can check uh, on our support website. So for example, if you want to see whether eSight or NCE support um, other vendors or not, um, we can go to our Huawei support website. So for example, you click on eSight. Uh, wait, let me share my screen. Okay, so here is um, the information that you can get. Uh, wait, let me... <clears throat> so here it will mention uh, the supported device on Huawei and also the supported device of the third party vendors. So you can check whether eSight support uh, the mentioned uh, model of Cisco or Xtreme switches or not. And any other question? So one of the questions from Ali Farahani Sani, uh, is it possible to monitor other brand? Yes, as I mentioned just now. Is it possible your NMS to manage known SNMP devices such as uh, SCADA? So basically, um, eSight runs based on uh, SNMP. Uh, so if the device does not support SNMP, it cannot uh, be used uh, to monitor. Is it support NBI? Yes, um, it can support NBI. Uh, whether it can be integrated with Google Earth. Uh, for this one, um, eSight cannot be integrated with Google Earth. Are all IP MPLS routers and services provision using a cough? Yes. So for this one, we will migrate the system from U2000 to NCE IP for monitoring alarm from IP device by net by NCE IT still using SNMP protocol. So for, for this question from Jack Vo, for monitoring alarm from IP device by NCE IP still using SNMP protocol, yes. So basically for NetCov, just now I mentioned that if you want to add some configuration or you want to edit configuration, you want to do some backup configuration, that is the use of NetCon. SNMP does not support those features. And the last one is, is it possible to configure the network and its services through net config without CLI? Can IP and PLS VPN be created updated via API customer? Yes, uh, Jahangir, the answer is yes. You can use the API. NetConf have more advanced application. Yes, correct, Danish. You are correct. So now uh, we will move on to the uh, next part of the um, next part of the webinar, which is the interconnection of uh, Huawei devices and a third party NMS. So in this uh, part, I'm using uh, SNMP V2 as an example configuration. And also the device that I will be use is our switch S5720 with a version of V2 100R11, and also the third party NMS that I will be using is the MG Soft Mid Browser. So, for the configuration of SNMP, first of all, the important ones or the mandatory one is the uh, version uh, V2C. Uh, so, you can use this command SNMP agent sysinfo version. After that, you need to specify the mid view, and uh, after that, you need to um, configure the community read and write. And the uh, second last one is the target host or threat. 
for where the trap will be sent to, to the NMS. And the last one for the SLMP agent trap enabled. So for this command, some of the trap by default is being uh, disabled on our Huawei switch. Uh, so if it's disabled, you can uh, just run this command to enable all the uh, SNMP agent trap, or you can also specify the specific trap that you want to enable. So once you have already configured the uh, SNMP, you can verify the configuration using some of the uh, some of these command. For example, display SNMP agent USM user. You can check uh, the user that you have already configured and also the USM group that uh, the user is buying to. And also you can check the SNMP agency's info, uh, SNMP agent meet view. And also you can use this command display current configuration to check on the SNMP configuration that you have already configured. And display SNMP agent trap all to see whether the trap is disabled or off on the switch. So if it's off and you need to use that trap, you can um, run the command SNMP agent trap, uh, like I mentioned uh, just now. The next one is SNMP agent target host, SNMP agent inform, and also SNMP agent extend error code status. So here are some of the uh, command that can you use to verify the configuration of your SNMP. And here I will share uh, some, uh, actually two cases uh, for the SNMP host uh, cannot connect to the NMS for the first one. So basically there are quite a few reasons on why uh, the SNMP host cannot connect to the NMS. So this lock you can um, see on the Huawei device. So for example, uh, the first reason is you can see here, the version was incorrect. So this means that the uh, SNMP versions on the device and NMS are inconsistent. So you can run the display agency's info uh, command to check the SNMP version, whether it is the same or not. If it's not the same, you can uh, modify it by using the command SNMP agency's info. And after that, you can specify the version. The next reason is the packet was too large. So the size of the SNMP packet sent by the NMS exceed the threshold set on the device. So by default, um, the SNMP packet is uh, not more uh, than 12,000 bytes. So if the NMS sends an oversized packet or more than 12,000 bytes, the device cannot connect to the NMS. So you need to modify the uh, packet size by using this command, SNMP agent packet. And after that, you can specify the size of the packet. The third reason is because the message was failed to be added to the message list. So the rate of the SNMP request packet sent by the NMS exceeds the processing capability of the device. So some suggestion that you can do is to lower the frequency on the NMS side whenever they are sending the SNMP request packet. The fourth reason is the community was incorrect. So the community names on the NMS um, are different. So you can uh, reconfigure the MP uh, community read and write. And you also need to make sure that the one that you configured on the device and the one that you uh, key in in the NMS is the same. So basically this uh, reason applies on SNMP V1 and V2C. And the fifth one is um, the decoded PDU error. So this one mainly applies on SNMP V3. So SNMP V3, uh, there are some possible causes such as SNMP V3 username configured on the device and NMS are different. The SNMP engine ID uh, configured on the device and NMS are not uh, consistent. And also maybe the authentication or encryption user on the NMS is incorrect. So you can use uh, some command uh, to check for example, display SNMP agent USM user to check on the uh, username. If it's not the same, you can modify it. And also you can check on the username group that you have already configured. Also, you can use the common display current configuration include SNMP, and then you can see the SNMP configuration on the device, and you can check whether the engine ID is the same or not. If not the same, you can uh, reconfigured as an MP agent local engine ID, and you can enter or key in the engine ID. And the last part is for the uh, authentication and also the encryption. 
So if it's not the same or if you are getting this error, you can try to reconfigure the uh, authentication and also the uh, privacy mode. The last one, and uh, sorry, the second last one is the SEL filter function. So for example, if you configure any SEL, you need to make sure that the SEL has already uh, permit uh, the NMS to send the SNMP request packet. So if it's denied, you need to uh, check back on your ACL, you can just use the command display ACL and you can check the rule whether it is correct or wrong. And the last part is the context name was incorrect. So this one, uh, it means that the NMS uh, context name is uh, incorrect and you need to change the context name on the NMS itself. And the second case is when NMS failed to receive track. So whenever you have already connect your uh, device to the NMS, but NMS failed to receive the trap, you can uh, check on the uh, configuration, for example, the SNMP version, whether to see the SNMP uh, information is correct or wrong. You can see the system maintenance information, physical location, and also the version itself. And you can check the version of trap to be sent. You can use this command, display SNMP agent target host, and you can see all the information such as the IP address of the target host, if VPN instance name, if you are using any VPN instance, trap sending mode, secure character uh, for sending trap, protocol version, and also the security level. And the last part is you can also use the display current configuration command, like uh, just now, uh, include SNMP, to check the source interface for sending the trap configured on the switch or not. However, uh, by default, the source interface for sending the thread is not specified. Okay, uh, for this part, I will show uh, some um, demonstration on how Huawei device uh, can communicate with uh, a mid browser. So this is the mid browser I'm using. Um, and this is our Huawei device. Before we go to the lab, can you please check mm -hmm. uh, the last question oh, okay. that was posted? Okay, sure. Thanks. A question from Jack. Vu, I config SNMP string, but always got the error message on IP device log due to I only use read for security policy so how to avoid this error so basically you need to configure both the community read and write on the device it is advisable to configure both is NCE mandatory for get advantage of net config and next stream um nce i think support uh next stream also okay then we will uh, continue with our uh, lab here okay so here is the uh, huawei switch as i mentioned just now is the s5720 with a version of V2 R11. So first, um, I will configure uh, the, oh, sorry. I'll please share the screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so here is our Huawei switch, uh, S5720 with a V2 R11 version. And I'm using this uh, mid browser to show how does uh, our Huawei device uh, interconnect or can it be connected to a third party NMS or not. So first of all, uh, on this um, mid browser, I've already loaded the mid file, uh, which is mandatory so that um, our Huawei device can communicate with this third party. So the mid file you can download on our Huawei support website. So first, I will configure the SNMP uh, configuration. So the first one is SNMP uh, version. Version. 
So as I mentioned just now, we have V1, V2C, and also V3. So you can enable one of it, or you can enable all also, not a problem. <clears throat> so for this example, just now I used SNMP V2C. So as in, uh, the next command that we need to configure is the MIP, SNMP agent MIP view for the management uh, information base. Include, and this one is just a string name. You can put any name. And also you need to specify the subtree name of the MIP object. So I use the ISO, which is the highest um, subtree in the MIP. The next one, I will configure the community read and write. Community uh, read. I will just put it as Huawei at one, two, three. And I need to specify the MIP view, which I've already configured just now with the string of ISO view. Next one is community write. Okay, I'll just use Huawei at 1234 and specify the MIP view, the string ISO view. Okay. So one of the command that you can use to verify the configuration, display current configuration, include SNMP. So as you can see here, here is the uh, SNMP configuration that has been configured. So this local engine is um, automatically generated. And the next one is we need to configure the target host to send the trap uh, from the device to the uh, mid browser. Trap, and then the address, the domain. So after that, we need to specify the IP address. So this MIP browser I'm installing in my PC itself. So I will need to uh, use the IP address of my PC. Three. And then you need to specify the UDP port. So the default UDP port of sending track is 162. Um, if you are using a different one, you need to uh, specify it. So in this uh, example, <clears throat> I'm using a different port just to show you. So we are using a port 163. We need to specify it. <clears throat> After that, you need to put the security name. You can just put any name as you want. And the last part is you need to specify the uh, SNMP version. So we are using V2C. Okay, so that's all. So you can double check again. And the one that I mentioned just now for the SNMP uh, trap enabled. So you can check whether by default the trap is uh, enabled or not. Display SNMP agent trap all. So as you can see here, some of the trap by default it is off and some it is on. So if you want to be uh, on the safe side, you can just enable all the trap or you can specifically enable what kind of trap uh, that you want. SNMP agent trap uh, enable. So if you want to be specific, you can use the feature name and we have a lot of um, feature name based on your requirement. So for this one, I will just um, enable all. Okay, so most of the um, configuration has already been done. So we will go to uh, mid browser. And we configure uh, the read and write. Just now I configure as Huawei at one, two, three. And as you can see here, it can um, communicate or connect with our Huawei device. So you can see here the uptime is around 27 days, 15 hours, and here is around three weeks, six days. So 
is the same. So we can test uh, some of the OID or some of the MIP on our uh, MIP browser here. So for example, if you want to get the uh, CPU usage of uh, the Huawei device, you can type in the MIP uh, name. And after that, you can search for the CPU usage, this one. Okay, here is the CPU usage. So you can also verify by using this pay CPU usage. Uh, the value may be a bit uh, deeper. You can also test on the uh, other information also, such as um, display temperature. You can also get this information. Okay, the current temperature. Uh, actually, there are many other uh, information you can use. So you just need to make sure that you load uh, the MIP file whenever you are using a third party NMS. And the next part, I will show how um, Huawei device can generate trap and also it will send the trap uh, to this MIP browser. So first I set uh, this trap ringer information, which I already set earlier on. So I will just generate one uh, simple uh, trap. For example, if a link is down. So this link is currently up. So I will try to shut down this link and see whether uh, the mid browser able to receive the trap or not. So as you can see here, mid browser able to receive this trap. Uh, link down G003. You can also verify uh, on our Huawei device as well. As you can see here, um, this one. The interface is down. So this is the trap that is being sent to this um, mid browser. So this is one of the um, trap that you can generate. Actually, there are many other traps. So I'll just show you uh, this one trap on how uh, our Huawei device can communicate with uh, third party NMS. So just for the conclusion, you need to make sure that uh, the read and write uh, community is the same uh, and also uh, the version whether it's correct or wrong, and need to make sure that the target host is being configured uh, correctly, especially on the UDP port uh, part. <clears throat> also pay attention to the SNMP agent trap, whether it is uh, default uh, disabled or whether it is uh, enabled by default. Okay, uh, before we move, any question? No. Some uh, yes, there were some questions. Okay. Let me see. Which command to check not net config support or not on Huawei router? Which uh, Which command to check net config uh, support or not on Huawei router? This one need to check uh, on the uh, Huawei product documentation whether it's uh, support net config or not. Uh, which authentication protocol SNMP password encrypted MD5 or SHA? Which authentication protocol? Basically, it used the um, SNMP V3 for the MD5 or also SHA. So SNMP is the protocol which has the security features which support the MD5 and also SHA. Uh, what is the function of MGSoft Mid Browser? So MGSoft Mid Browser is like a, a 
third party NMS where you can get alarm like this one from the device. And also you can query some information of the device provided you already load the uh, information uh, of the MIP. And And in which command to check next from this one then? Okay, so I think that's all. So we move on to the uh, next part. So this is um, the last part for our webinar uh, for our Huawei NMS eSight. So I will introduce some features and also functions of eSight. And later on, I will log into uh, eSight to show you how does eSight works and Maybe you can have a clearer picture on how does eSight looks like. So basically eSight is a uh, platform which have this basic management function such as a topology management, uh, alarm management, performance management, resource, and also device software management. It also have the WLAN management and also the agile report function. So eSight can be integrated with uh, OSS or any third party NMS via NBI. And also you can use eSight for network operation and maintenance, which you can access it via um, Internet Explorer, Firefox or Chrome. Can you please share your screen again? Oh, sorry. Uh, no worries. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll start again. Uh, so basically, eSight is our NMS, which uh, have um, this basic function and also some service management functions. And for the basic management functions, we have the topology management, alarm management, performance management, resource management, and also device uh, management, device software management. As well as we have the WLAN management and also the agile report for the service management function. So uh, eSight can be integrated uh, with a third party uh, NMS via NBI. And also it can be used uh, for network operation and maintenance um, personnel. So you can access eSight using a browser through um, Internet Explorer, Firefox or Chrome. So how does uh, the network devices communicate with eSight? So basically it is based on SNMP. It will communicate uh, using SNMP protocol Telnet, Estelnet, FTP, and also SFTP. So first of all, you need to add the device in eSight. So it is uh, under the device edition. And the discovery protocol, we have um, SNMP and also ICMP. So you can add the device in a single way. So you just need to specify the IP address. And also you can choose the template if you have already have the uh, template configured, or you can also edit the SNMP parameters manually, and also the telnet, which is optional. And eSight also support uh, automatic discovery. So you can add multiple network segments, or you can put the range of the IP address, start IP address, and also the end IP address that you want to add the device. And for example, if you have any new device that you have add in the network and you want um, it to be discovered by the NMS, eSight can do it by this automatic discovery. So you can schedule it by hour, day, week, or maybe month. So you can set the task setting here, as per mentioned just now, by hour, day, week, or month. And also you can do it on a one-off um, setting. After that, you need to specify the SNMP settings based on the template uh, that you configured. And after that, it will discover automatically. And the last uh, method that you can use to add the devices in uh, eSight is using um, the Excel form. And it will add the device in batches. So in the Excel form, you just need to download it uh, from our eSight. And after that, you can specify the IP address. <coughs> the protocol and also the version. So after you specify the protocol version, you can put in the community read and write. So if it's V3, then you need to um, specify the authentication and also the encryption mode. So I will just uh, log into eSight first. 
to show you uh, the information. So basically, here is uh, the ESI login page. And here is the ESI uh, home page. So we have some uh, overview on how you can uh, use this ESI. For example, you need to import license, some initialize system settings, uh, add device. You can also put it as a group settings and also monitoring settings. So I will just show you how we can uh, add some devices in this uh, ESI. So you just go to add resource. So add resource, this one is the one that um, I mentioned just now, if you want to add the device, uh, single uh, device. So I have one de device I've already configured. So this, uh, this device I used uh, as an MP V3. So I already configured the version, uh, the target host, and also the MIP, MIP view, and also the user, as well as I bind it to the group uh, as per above here. And after that, the authentication mode, and also with the privacy mode. So I will just show you, we add this one device. So the IP is, 21. And if you have any template here, you can use it. Otherwise, you can also edit your own uh, SNMP parameters. So the security name just now, user is Huawei. And the authentication password, I configured the same, Huawei at 123. And the encryption is Huawei at 1234. And the telnet, which is optional, you can uh, edit the telnet parameters or you can also select the template if you have the template. So if you want to create a template, you can go to this uh, protocol template and you can create your own template here. So I will just put in uh, the telnet. And just click on apply. So the resource has been successfully added to ESI. So if you want to use the automatic discovery, like I mentioned just now, you can use this uh, feature if you want to add uh, the device uh, automatically. You can specify the start IP and also the end IP address. You can add a multiple network segment as well. After that, you can choose the task settings, like I mentioned just now, which is hourly, daily, weekly, or maybe monthly. So I will just use this one-off uh, task settings. And the SNMP settings, which I've already configured the uh, SNMP uh, template. <clears throat> so we can just discover. So after that, this site will automatically discover all the devices uh, which we have already configured. So you just need to make sure that all this device is already configured and you can use this automatic discovery. So this one is the task. And this one is the one that I mentioned if you are using the uh, Excel template. So you can just download the Excel template. And after that, you can fill in all the <coughs> information. As you can see here, there are some uh, information which is uh, mandatory that you need to fill in. Okay, so once you have filled in all this uh, information, you can upload it uh, here. And after that, you can proceed in adding the device. So once the device have been added into eSight, you can view the device.
So here are the devices that we have already successfully added just now. <clears throat> okay, uh, the next part is the monitoring device status in the NE Explorer. So once you have already added the device, you can monitor the device. So there are many things, sorry. There are many things that you can monitor on the device, such as the basic information, which includes uh, the version, the device version, the device type or IP address, or maybe some MAC address. And you can also monitor the KPI of the device. So in this um, KPI here, you can monitor the CPU usage, memory usage, and you can also monitor few other things as well, which you can uh, configure according to your requirement. <coughs> and you can also monitor the interface. And also since this is a, a WLAN controller, so you can also monitor the AP, which is connected uh, to the uh, WLAN controller. So once we have already added the device, so for example, we can go to one of the uh, device. For example, this is our air engine, which is a WLAN controller. So on the left part here, you can see you can get all the basic information, uh, the device panel, which is the picture. You can see the alarm list generated by this device. And also you can use some device config features as well. And this one is for the um, Telnet also SNMP to add the device to communicate with the NMS. And you have the device VLAN, you have the WLAN features, which you can monitor AP, client and so on. So below here you have the NE average CPU usage. So because we just add the device, so it will take uh, quite some time to reflect here. You can see the responding duration. And for the interface part also, you can see below here, what is the interface um, status, whether it is normal or faulty. You can also monitor the bandwidth usage of the interface and also the rate which is the receiving and also transmitting rate. As well as you have AP, which is connected to the AC, you can also monitor here. The next part is the topology management, where uh, one of the e-site function also, where you can see your, where you can see your own topology in the uh, page. So these topology objects, uh, you can organize based on their uh, network um, network uh, characteristic. For example, if it's, this is the core layer, you can put it core layer. We have the aggregation or maybe uh, the distribution layer. And below here, we have the access layer switch. So in this topology management page, you can display the alarm severities. And you can also display the collector uh, performance data on the device. And it will, for example, if there's a link down, one of the link from green will turn into red. And also if the, for example, uh, the bandwidth usage exceeds the threshold, it will also turn uh, the color from green to red. Apart from that also, uh, from this topology uh, management page, you can do the shortcut uh, access to the uh, network management. You can just uh, double click on the device, uh, after that, it will uh, redirect you to the uh, device management page as I showed you earlier. You can also use your own layout and there are some uh, filtering um, you can also apply as well. And also you can specify the device uh, icon as per your network requirement. And also if you want to hide some of the device or unhide, you can also use this topology management. The next part is uh, big screen monitoring. So this big screen monitoring um, features uh, applies in, for example, if you are in the NOC uh, environment or if you are in the operation and maintenance center, <clears throat> which you need to uh, display e uh, in a bigger screen or a larger screen. 
So you can use this big screen monitoring. So it supports uh, high resolution to facilitate the centralized monitoring demonstration, or maybe you want to do some presentation as well. So in this big screen monitor, uh, you can um, choose what is the information that you want to display, for example, the topology, or maybe you want to show the uh, alarm generated in eSight. You can also show the bandwidth usage as well. And there are many other things that you can display in this big screen monitoring. So eSight also supports uh, alarm management, which you can uh, receive alarm from the device, which uh, have a few severities such as critical, major, minor, and also warning. And also uh, you can acknowledge or unacknowledge the alarm. And also there are some clearance status for the alarm. So for example, if there is one alarm that has been uh, generated, you need to acknowledge and also you need to clear. However, some alarm that is uh, acknowledged, it will be automatically clear. So this one, you need to uh, pay more attention. And also you can see the first occurrence time, for example, uh, for the past one day, three days, seven days, or maybe 30 days. You can also filter, uh, just a moment. And also you can filter based on the alarm type, alarm source type, alarm source, and also name uh, of the device as well. So in this page, in this uh, inside uh, alarm page, you can uh, query up to 20,000 alarm in one page. <clears throat> so I will just show you the alarm page because just now we just add uh, the device. Maybe there are no alarm uh, generated yet. So you can go under the fault menu, or you can just click it on the uh, icon here. So as you can see here, here are some of the type of the alarm. So you can acknowledge, clear, you can select all, acknowledge or clear, and also you can export the alarm as well. So for the alarm, we have the historical alarms. So there are some historical alarms here, which you can also use for the uh, network monitoring. You can also uh, filter it based on your requirement. Alarm source type. So you can, based on the device that you want to see the alarm also can, you can select it. <coughs> alarm source also, you can group it by any type if you have any group. And also we have a uh, mass alarm. For example, if you must any alarm, and it will appear on this page. So we move on to the next one first. So eSight also support uh, real-time alarm notification, which it will uh, notify the uh, admin of the eSight or the user of the eSight. Uh, so for example, if there is any alarm, it will trigger the sound. And also if you want it to send to your email or also SMS, you can also um, configure it on eSight. So once the alarm is generated, you can go quickly to the topology or the device panel by clicking to uh, one of the uh, icon here. And after that, you can also see what is the procedure or what is the troubleshooting steps that you can um, do to um, clear or maybe to uh, acknowledge this alarm. I think um, in this page, it will show, let me see. So for example, if like this one, um, so it will show uh, more information of the alarm. So you can click on view details and it will redirect you to the 
uh, page where how you can uh, further troubleshoot this uh, alarm. <coughs> and the next part is uh, performance management. So eSight also supports performance management where you can monitor the performance of your devices, which include um, CPU usage, memory usage, response duration, uh, actually, there is many filters that you can use. Uh, later on, I will show you. And you can also base uh, on the network device. And also, you can base on the slot of the device and also the interface of the device. <clears throat> so you can set your own task. And also, you can uh, set what is the filter that you want to apply for this particular task. So you can go to performance and after that you can go to the performance data so as you can see here just now we just added the device so some of the information is not reflected yet <clears throat> so this is the task name uh, the default collection task and also you can add more information if you want to display for example you want to see the current power or maybe the receiving rate the forwarding rate there are many other filters that you can apply. Okay. So basically, it will take quite uh, sometimes, I think, depending on the task that you uh, set. So basically just now it's using the default collection task for network devices. So the period is every 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes, it will collect the um, information from the device and it will be reflected uh, in the page that I showed just now. So you can also create your own uh, task. So for example, this one, if you want to put testing, you can also select the uh, present uh, template. So for example, this one. And you can also add the performance counter based on your requirement. So we have a lot more. We can add all if you want to. So it will add all the information here. So you can also select resource on which device or on which group that you want to apply this uh, task. So you can select all if you want to. So you just need to go to the performance data. And after that, it will be uh, reflected here. As you can see here, we already changed the task name. So every 15 minutes, it will collect and it will be reflected here. <coughs> and also eSight supports a configuration file management where you can create a backup task to backup your configuration. And you can also um, use these uh, features to download uh, the configuration file and you can view the configuration file in eSight itself as well. So the protocol use is uh, FTP. As I mentioned just now, eSight support uh, SNMP, uh, Telnet, STelnet, FTP and also SFTP. So you can download the uh, configuration file uh, on this uh, page. So I can just show you roughly. <clears throat> you can go to resource network so it's under the configuration file management
So you can see here you have the backup tasks, you have the config files, and also you have the config changes. So here are some of the uh, prerequisite that you need to make uh, you need to configure in order to use this feature. So you can set the backup task, the config file here. So later it will reflect the startup config file and also the running config file. <coughs> And also, if there is any config change in the device, it will also be shown here. So ESI also support uh, device software management where you can uh, upgrade your device uh, via ESI. So for example, if you have 100 uh, device or 100 uh, switches or routers that you want to upgrade, you can do it via ESI. So you can just uh, load uh, the firmware and you can also specify the um, specific time uh, that you want to upgrade the device and ESIT will carry out uh, the upgrade uh, process for you. So you can manage the version, patch and also license file through ESIT also. And ESIT also supports uh, WLAN management. Uh, unified management of the wired uh, network, wireless, and also the user. So the integration of wired and wireless, uh, wireless network. So you can um, get all the information uh, based on the user that is connected uh, via wired or wireless. And you can uh, also have the user management. You can have the traffic and report information based on the AP or maybe based on the SSID as well. And for this uh, wireless uh, network management, you can see the visual of the radio, terminal, and interface sources. And also it has the um, one-click uh, features where you can uh, use to diagnose the fault uh, from the terminal to the network side. So this is the um, example uh, for the WLAN management region monitor. So you can uh, custom your own topology and also you can um, put your own uh, dashboard, which um, information that you want to put, for example, AP train, traffic trend or wireless resource uh, statistic and so on. And below here also, you can see the user uh, signal strength, how many online users that is connected uh, in that re particular region. You can also, uh, check on the channel usage, on the channel uh, 5G usage as well, and also the CPU usage. So basically, there are many, <coughs> there are many uh, information that you can uh, include uh, in this topology. And apart from that, you can also upload your own uh, floor map in eSight, and you can specify the AP where it is located to uh, ease the um, process of monitoring uh, the WLAN network. So you can also um, view and also apply this number of access user CPU usage. Uh, and then after that, it will be displayed in this uh, topology. And also have the dashboard uh, display running status where you can see the overall uh, information of your WLAN network. Uh, you, or maybe you want to see by the uh, access controller itself, you can also see AP, client, SSID, or maybe region as well. So you can uh, choose based uh, on your uh, requirement. And the information collected from the physical devices uses uh, WIDS and topology is displayed clearly in this uh, page. So basically, it is uh, easy to understand based on this. Um, chart or maybe graph and also it can help uh, to locate the fault in the network so this is the example if you want to uh, diagnose the fault in uh, wlan network you can also use uh, this feature so once you've uh, diagnosed it will show you what is the uh, fault cause and also what is the fault uh, suggestion so you can also see whether the radio is normal or not, the AP is normal or not, and also if the AC is running normally or not, and so on. We have few other uh, parameters as well. 
And the last part is for the Agile Reporter. So for this part, uh, Agile Reporter is uh, features which uh, provide which provide report display, uh, dashboard monitoring, periodic report, and also email notification function. <clears throat> so you can view all the reports um, and also based on the dashboard. And you can also uh, make a periodic reporting to be sent to your email as well. So here is the um, Agile reported page. So you can quickly generate report based on the uh, information that you want. Uh, later, I will show you. So you can also filter and also uh, add some filter. And also you can display the information based on uh, graph bar or maybe some pie chart as you want. Also, it support real-time monitoring and um, also associated uh, display based on the intelligent uh, identification. So I will show you <coughs> this Agile report uh, in eSight. A bit slow to load uh, this page. <coughs> Maybe I can answer some questions. Yes, there are many questions, but uh, yeah, <laughs> starting from uh, way back. Why? Oh, okay, all right. Uh, I'm not sure which one was the. Oh, okay, first. maybe maybe I'll finish this uh, the page. That's I think that finished. the the first one that. Um, was that um, let me see what's the difference between Estelnet oh, oh. and what Netcom? is the difference between Estelnet and Netcom? So Estelnet basically is the um, connection used to establish Netconf. Netconf is a protocol used for the uh, monitoring. Netcom and uh, Estelnet is just a connection used to establish uh, between the NMS and also the device. Has ESIC same functionality of U2000 and NCE? Uh, yes, basically ESIC is uh, more or less the same with U2000 and NCE. Just that uh, U2000, uh, sorry, NCE is a new uh, NMS uh, introduced by ESIC, uh, sorry, by Huawei. Can we install ESIC as lab? Yes, we can. But uh, usually it depends on your network requirement. Uh, if you want to install, eSight can run um, 90 days without license after you need to purchase your own license. eSight property to Huawei or uh, this one, uh, I've already answered just now. eSight can uh, communicate with other vendors' devices as well, such as Cisco and so on. What additional benefit this site could bring uh, in our network? Is it in, is it possible to modify at delete column is site Excel template? Yes, you can um, modify the Excel template. I will show you uh, for the report. Uh, one of the questions from my uh, colleague, Huawei colleague, for the topology you need to create by yourself or when the SNMP discover. Uh, this one, it will discover based on the uh, LLDP, Link Layer Discovery Protocol. So once it discovered, after that, it will uh, generate an auto topology. And also you can edit the topology based on your uh, network.
uh, does inside show real time interface? Uh, does inside show real time interface utilization? Yes, it shows. But if you uh, shorten the polling time of inside, it will um, reduce the performance of the inside. So it is uh, advisable to use the default value for the polling system. From the inside, is it possible to see current power consumption of the device? Yes, this one you can use. Uh, just now I already show you, you can uh, change the uh, collection data task. Uh, any other question? Oh, this one question regarding HCIE. <laughs> Uh, as standard is same as SSH, yes, correct. Uh, will you share the presentation? Yes, later, I think Elena will share the presentation with uh, everyone. So this one is the, uh, the last part, uh, the Agile report page, where you can uh, generate the report. So as you can see here, you have many uh, information or many report that you can generate. For example, WLAN report uh, based on QoS, or if you have any storage device, you can also uh, generate the report. <clears throat> so for example, if you want to uh, generate one report <clears throat> for the device type report, or if you want to see uh, the availability of the device on a daily basis, and you want it to be sent to your email, you can use this uh, feature. I will just show you, okay. So just now we have already add a uh, few devices in this side. So how you can uh, edit the filter, just right click and then click on edit. <coughs> and here there are many filter that you can choose. Admin up status port, uh, port use rate and so on. <coughs> So for example, if you want to add this one, NE type, oh, it's already be used, uh, or maybe NE state, whether it is online or offline, you can add it. And after that, it will be shown here on a new column. So if you want to export, you can uh, click up here, export as uh, PDF, Excel, and so on. So if you want to change the format uh, from the table to other, um, oh, be sure. Wait. <coughs> uh, okay, I cannot click OK below here, but you can change the uh, the chat based on your um, preference. And but from that also, there are many other information, for example, interface traffic performance. <coughs> so this information uh, which report uh, in this Agile reporter is based on the performance data that you have created earlier. <coughs> As you can see here, <coughs> it provides uh, all the information. For example, this one is the description of the interface. So you have the average outbound usage and so on. So you can add the filter. <clears throat> so once you have add the filter, but if there is no data shown in this um, table or in this chart report, you need to make sure that on the uh, monitoring settings that you have include the uh, tasks. So you can see there are many other information that you can include here. Okay, uh, so basically that's all for my presentation today. So the next part I think is uh, on Elena. <clears throat> yes. Um, before that, uh, I think there's one more question. Oh, there's more question, okay. <clears throat> I think uh, this one, um, what is the best scenario to have this side deployed? Can it be deployed along and? Oh, um, 
can it de deploy like NCE agile controller WLAN? Yes, but for NCE and inside more or less is the same. It's an NMS and agile controller is not an NMS. So basically it is a, a authentication more like a radius or maybe techx. A WLAN controller, yes, it can be deployed with inside as well. Not a problem. <clears throat> Okay, so um, Elena? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, about the presentation, um, I already received some email addresses uh, in private. You can either uh, send me your email address in private and I will share the presentation with you a bit later. Mm -hmm. Or you can go to the Huawei Enterprise Pro community where we upload the, the recording after each live session. Um, I just want to make a quick introduction for those of you who are not familiar with the community yet. Uh, some of you I know that uh, are already familiar <coughs> with it. Uh, this is a big technical community for all Huawei Enterprise products and certification where you can go to uh, learn uh, but also to share knowledge. Um, we already have over 187,000 members, uh, which includes engineers, experts, customers, partners, uh, students, and so on. We have an extensive uh, knowledge base which, uh, with over 40,000 posts that you can uh, learn from. Uh, our average solving time is under 24 hours at the moment. Um, and if you join the community, you can also join some of the programs we have for the most active members, for example, the MV program, which stands for Most Valuable Engineer. Um, and also you can uh, join our monthly activities and webinars. Uh, we have uh, rewards uh, for each of them, usually uh, Amazon.com gift cards or high coins that you can use in exchange for the products we have in the, in the online mall. As you can see in this um, image, we have um, Huawei certification vouchers in the online mall. We have Amazon.com gift cards, but also physical uh, gifts like um, smartwatches, smartphones, uh, and so on. So I highly recommend you to uh, join the community if you are not already a member and uh, start collecting high coins. And uh, I hope that you will uh, enjoy the um, the technical content that you find there, but I also want to invite you to share uh, content because basically we want uh, we want you to help each other out and share quality content uh, because you are all professionals and uh, I think that uh, there's a lot a lot to be sh okay. I see that we have a new a new user. I uh, I want to invite you to join. Okay, I will share the. I will share the link now in the chat box, uh, the link to our uh, website. This is the forum uh, website. Uh, please register. And uh, um, if, uh, if you already have an account, you just have to log in and um, answer the three questions that will follow a bit later. OK, uh, we can move to the next slide. Okay, uh, we have prepared the webinar post. Um, and in order to win one of the 10 uh, $20 Amazon.com gift cards, which we have prepared, you need to either register if you are new here or log in if you are already a member of the community. And then you have to leave your comment under this post. And uh, in your comment, please uh, say the correct answer or answers for each of the three questions. So please, for example, um, mention one and then leave the, the letters that correspond to the correct uh, answer. Uh, I will also send again the link to the webinar post in case you have missed it before. And um, after that, I will um, invite our host to present you the three questions that you need to answer in order to be eligible for the rewards. Okay. Um, Now I share the, the link to the webinar post. Um, so in order to win one of the gift cards, you need to go here and leave your, uh, leave your comment under this post. Okay, I'm glad that there are new, new people here. Um, okay, 
If you are new, register on the website and then you can go to this uh, link that I just shared. I will share it again for the new ones. And uh, you can answer your questions. And uh, if you uh, answer all three questions correctly, you can win on one of the gift cards. Um, if you have any questions for us, you can uh, always leave, uh, leave them in the community. There's always someone who will reply, either an admin or a moderator or an engineer or one of our MVEs. So um, if you are new, you will see that there's a lot to learn uh, in the community and also a lot of uh, activities and uh, webinars that will follow. Um, okay, I will uh, collect your email addresses and send you the presentation after. Um, I will now uh, let you present the three questions. Okay, all right. So the first question is, uh, what are the common network monitoring and management protocols used? So is it OSPF, SNMP, NetCon, or LLDP? So it is a multiple choice question. <clears throat> And the next question is, what is the packet type sent from the NMS to the agent or host when it is initiating the connection? So it is a single choice uh, answer, whether it is a set request, hello packet, get request, or TCP hack packet. It's a single choice uh, answer. And the last question is, what are the types of encryption modes supported is, uh, in SNMP v3? Uh, multiple choice. Uh, is it AES128, MD5, 3DES, or maybe SHA? <coughs> so that's uh, all for the questions. Yes, uh, does anyone have any other questions left uh, for our presenter? <coughs> no, no, no. So just to make it clear, uh, please don't reply to the three questions here. Uh, in order to in order to be eligible for the rewards, you will have to go to the link I sent twice. I will send it again if you wish. Uh, you have to go to the community and uh, leave your answers there. So please don't send me your, uh, your answers in private because they will not be taken into consideration. So you need to go here and leave your, question, leave your answers there in the comments section. Please don't send me the, the answers now. I will upload the questions uh, there in the post after we end the, the live session. So you have to go there, okay? Okay, so uh, please don't send me any more, uh, any more answers now. Uh, if you have any questions, any technical questions for the moment, uh, this is uh, the right moment to ask them. If not, we will uh, end the live webinar and I invite you all to post your questions in the community if you have any, if you want to learn anything uh, about this topic, uh, our engineers and experts will uh, reply. So does anyone have uh, any more questions left for now? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you explained uh, everything clearly. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm still uh, collecting uh, email addresses because many, many participants uh, won the presentation. So one question from Navas, how to fix six, six lock receiver not working with SNMP? Uh, for this one, we need to check on the configuration because uh, there might be few possible causes on why the syslog receiver is not working with the SNMP. <clears throat> no problem. Yes, I know. Uh, so unfortunately, it's difficult to cover all uh, time zones with our live webinars. Uh, it's almost impossible because we have uh, participants from all around the world, different time zones. Um, sometimes for some of us, it's morning. For some of us, it's evening. Uh, it's almost impossible to cover all of them. 
so uh, the only solution we could find uh, is was to share the recording after the live webinar in the community because unfortunately it's difficult to to cover everyone's time zones um, this is an international community with users from all around the world so we try to cover as many as possible but it's impossible to cover all of them so i'm i'm sorry that you're not able to to attend from the beginning but um, yes um, usually we uh, mention the time zone in utc plus zero everyone needs to calculate their own um, time zone depending on your on your country so <laughs> Usually, this is how we, this is the solution we find to cover. So when we say UTC plus zero, it means that you need to calculate the, the local time in your country by yourself. But yes, uh, it's impossible to cover all time zones, but um, thank you for joining, if you, even if you joined a bit later. And um, yes, if you want the, the recording, uh, you can either send me your email address in private or uh, access the link that I already posted here. And I will up upload the recording and the presentation and also the questions uh, in the post. Yes, like I said, uh, I will share the presentation a bit later. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, second uh, webinar. Yes, you're uh, most welcome. <laughs> I also thank everyone who asked questions yes. and also to our uh, participants who answered questions. Um, thank you all for being so active and uh, involved in this live session. Uh, I don't know if you can get the email of uh, Muhammad. It's, <laughs> it's his choice. I'm not allowed <laughs> to share it. Uh, <laughs> it's his private information. So. Uh, it's not my decision, of course. Okay, my email. If you have any question, can just drop me an email. I will try to help if I can. Wait, let me share. Okay. Yes. <coughs> yes, I think you're also a member of the community, right? And um, mm -hmm. yes. um, if there are more questions, uh, everyone can leave them uh, there. And under the webinar post, you can uh, you can see them mm -hmm. there. Okay. Thank you, guys. I'm I'm glad that you are interested in this topic. Um, I'm glad that there were so many questions, and uh, thank you all for uh, attending. Um, we always try to present you new new topics that you are interested in. We try to cover most time zones, but as I said, it's impossible. So this is the compromise solution. Um, we post the the recording after the live session. Uh, no, you cannot see Elena's face now because <laughs> she she is not wearing any makeup. She's working from home. <laughs> but next time, I promise that I will uh, <laughs> show you my face. You can see my face in the community. I have a profile picture if you are curious. <laughs> Thank you for uh, for the curiosity. <laughs> yeah. We need some uh, we need some laughs from time to time, especially these days. Yes. Okay, thank you, thank you all. Okay, all right. This was it for today. Um, I hope that uh, you will join our our upcoming uh, live sessions as well. Thank you so much, Mohammad. It was okay, a great no session. Have yeah. a great day. Yeah. Yes, okay. I never Thanks. show my face because uh, <laughs> I'm not the presenter. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> If you if you attend the, the next one, you'll see my Elena's face. This is the new challenge. <laughs> Thank you for your interest. But my face is not important. The the information we share here is important. So yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs>